Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Several arrests have been made in the brutal assassination of the Haitian president. This story takes the lead in on today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Monday, 12th July, 2021. Details when we return. Hubbard's big promotion is back. Live free for one year. Spend $50 or more in any Hubbard's department and receive a chance to win. Big prizes every month. Property or vehicle insurance for one year. Free internet, cable and data for one year. Free fuel for one year. Free cooking gas for one year. Free electricity for one year. Free drinks for one year. Extra cash account and the big free groceries for one year. Promotion runs from April 1st to September 30th, 2021. Live free for one year with Hubbard's in association with Salt Gas, Flow, Grenadian General Insurance, Cara Brewery, Coca-Cola, Grenada Bottling Company, Grenland, Communal Cooperative Credit Union, Dutch Lady Milk, Promo, Danny and Supreme. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome back. A group of 28 foreign mercenaries, including retired Colombian soldiers and two Haitian American citizens, have been arrested in connection with the assassination of Haitian President Jovenel Moïse. Details from this Al Jazeera news item. A very public display in Port-au-Prince. Police load two men into the bed of a pickup truck, saying they may be a part of the armed gang that allegedly assassinated President Jovenel Moïse, later paraded in front of the press. Outside of the police station where several suspects are being held, an angry crowd gathered, demanding the suspects be turned over to them. Those guys killed the president. We are going to make them suffer now that the police have found them and taken them to jail. We want them to burn today. The Haitian police chief said that 28 attackers have been identified, 26 Colombians and two Americans of Haitian descent. He said eight were still on the run and three had been killed. And in a surprising turn, the Colombian defense minister acknowledged some of the suspects had been in the Colombian army. In response to the assassination of the Haitian president, today Interpol has officially requested information from the Colombian government and the national police about the alleged perpetrators of this act. Initially, the information indicates they are Colombian citizens, retired members of the National Army. We have given instructions by the national government to our police and the army to collaborate in the investigation to clarify these facts immediately. Our public force is fully at the disposition of the sister Republic of Haiti. This is all unfolding among a political backdrop of confusion about who is actually in charge. Well, first I would say that um, it is still, it is our view, and we continue to call for elections to happen this year, and we believe they should proceed. We know that free and fair elections will facilitate a peaceful transfer of power to a newly elected president, and we certainly continue to support Haiti's democratic institutions. Moïse had been ruling by decree after the majority of parliament was dissolved in January last year. Now both Claude Joseph and Ariel Henry, both senior politicians, claim they are in charge. Barbados, his prime minister, addressed the vexing issue that affects the international business sector by slamming attempts by the world's richest countries to implement a minimum global corporate tax regime while excluding small countries from the discussion. Barbados today has more in this report. Earlier this month, the Paris-based Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development proposed new rules requiring companies to be taxed at a rate of at least 15%, which is projected to raise more than $150 billion in global tax revenues annually. It could spell trouble for locally-based international businesses that currently benefit from the attractiveness of the country's low corporate taxes that amount to 5.5% at most. Motley called on her Caribbean counterparts to take a common stand on the matter. And this is so fundamentally different from the governance structures which hold our societies together that we have to ask for a moment to pause and to have serious discussions on these matters because these countries that have participated in the international financial services arena 
were encouraged so to do by the very same countries that now want to shut it down. Over in St. Lucia, where the country's general election date has been announced by Prime Minister Alan Shastany. More in this short report from NTN Nightly News out of St. Lucia. St. Lucia's general election date has been announced. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Shastney, made the revelation on Monday, 5th July 2021, during an address to the nation. The Prime Minister explained that in keeping with the Constitution of St. Lucia, he on Monday advised Governor-General His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack to dissolve the Parliament of St. Lucia and issue the writs of election. Honorable Shastney noted that there were three important considerations that influenced the election date. Firstly, we're very close to the res resolution of the impacts matter after years of negotiations with the United States government. And it was critical for me as your Prime Minister to resolve this critical and long-standing issue which has so negatively affected our police force and our entire country for so many years. Secondly, looking at the fallout in other Caribbean islands which held elections during COVID, I was deeply concerned about a possible massive outbreak which could overwhelm our health care system. I've been working for many months trying to source additional doses of the vaccine so we could have a larger percentage of our population vaccinated before the election. We continue to work with CARICOM to try to obtain the necessary quantity to protect our people. I close tonight by announcing that the general elections will be held on July 26, 2021, and that the nomination day will be July 16th, 2021. <laughs> You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. In an interesting twist of events, it's official. Castries North MP Stevenson King and former Prime Minister will be contesting the July 26th general election under an independent umbrella. Stanley Lucian of HTS News Force reports. With a lifetime in politics during which he was schooled by some of the best in the business, Stevenson King understands the importance of timing and he used it to good effect in announcing his departure from the party which he had served in so many capacities for so many years. In stating the grounds for the divorce, the former party leader cited irreconcilable differences with the party he said had lost its way. And after having spent so much time, indeed for the past few years, attempting to share my wisdom with my colleagues, to pursue a different brand of politics, I have reached the inevitable and painful conclusion that I can no longer be part of an organization that I can hardly recognize. King painted a picture of a cabinet and a party which placed self-interest over the interest of the people. Politics must be about the people, and it must be for the people and country. When it fails to do so, we lead ourselves down the dangerous slippery slope towards the most egregious abuses of power. I have therefore decided that I will not be putting myself forward as one of the candidates for the UWP at the upcoming general elections. I will, however, in answer to the calls of so many people, both here and abroad, and in the constituency of Castries North, be contesting the general elections as an independent candidate, seeking a mandate as a patriotic St. Lucian in the Parliament of St. Lucia. The former Prime Minister said he had tried in vain to direct his cabinet colleagues 
onto the right path, hoping that his many years of experience would hold some sway with ministers. King says it is painful to say goodbye, but he could not continue to delude himself. Today, I find myself unable to recognize the founding principles of my party in the government that I am supposedly a part of and say, Sapaflambo. In all good conscience, I cannot go to the people and ask them to endorse for another five years what has just preceded us and to repose the leadership of this country in the same group of people in some mistaken belief that it will be all right in the morning. Stevenson King could have chosen to part ways with the United Workers' Party after the general election or during midterm. His decision to leave at the end of the term, ahead of the election, he argues, is the more honorable time to do it. But the timing has left some United Workers' Party supporters feeling betrayed, and with just over two weeks before the poll, the United Workers' Party has been left scampering to minimize the damage from his unscheduled departure. Stanley Lucien for the HDS News Force. In the meantime, Prime Minister Alan Shastani has not taken kindly to the news of the departure of one of the longest-serving stalwarts of the UWP, Stevenson King. Shastani has described the exit as a betrayal of the people of St. Lucia. Shastani has relieved the Castries North MP of his ministerial duties and has assumed responsibility for his portfolios. Solange Alfred of HTS News Force reports. Stevenson King's move across the political battlefield has ruffled the feathers of UWP associates. Prime Minister Alain Chastney broke his silence for the first time since the news of the stalwarts exit. Some people have called it a betrayal to the United Workers Party. I don't. This is a betrayal to the people of St. Lucia. The rumor mill churned for weeks with talk surrounding King's impending departure from the ranks of the UWP. Confirmation would come on Thursday with downed yellow flags and his constituency office repainted in blue ahead of a televised address. According to Shastny, the UWP camp had tried and failed to corroborate the widespread speculation on the street. I was like many other people, surprised but not surprised. We all know that this has probably been the worst kept secret in St. Lucia. It should be noted that King did not reportedly quit the United Workers' Party. However, he did resign as the candidate of choice for the UWP in the upcoming elections. But in the Prime Minister's opinion, there is no difference. I had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with him, of which none of these things that he is now expressing did he express to me. The Prime Minister points the finger at unresolved tension from the 2016 campaign as one of the possible reasons for the recent developments. But Chastney claims King was treated with the utmost respect. You're going to tell me that Minister King sat there with the, the most senior portfolio? And my government wasn't given a, a basket to hold water, was given the greatest budget allocation in the history of the Ministry of Infrastructure. We're undertaking the largest construction project in the history of St. Lucia at HIA Airport, all of which were under his supervision, that a person as experienced as he is can try to convince you and the people of St. Lucia that somebody was undermining him and it, he went through five years and never said anything that he waits for the bell to ring now to make this pronouncement? I'm sorry. Hours after the official confirmation of King's resignation, the UWP filled the vacant slot for the candidate to contest the Castries North seat. Solaj Alfred, HTS News Force. 
Did you know that your friends and family can now shop at the food fair from anywhere in the world and you can receive here in Grenada? The food fair and GrenadaMarket.com now make it possible through secure online shopping and personalized customer service. Simply send your loved ones a list of your preferred items or let them fill an online basket and the items will be available for pickup or delivery. Visit GrenadaMarket.com or the foodfair.gd today for more details. The new norm. Spread the news. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.